Now, women in Senegal are demanding for climate justice ahead of the United Nations COP29 summit in Azerbaijan this month. About 50 climate activists took to the streets of Dhaka, seeking protection of the country's resources and calling for a decarbonized future. The women say they have been marching for four years without anything changing. While on the other hand, leaders spend billions on conferences as industrialized countries emit greenhouse gases. This year has seen record-breaking floods in Senegal affecting thousands of people and damaging more than 1,000 hectares of crops in the north and east of the country. Now, for more on the call for climate justice by Senegalese women, I am now being joined by the Executive Director, Renevlin Development Initiative, Philip Jacko, from Nigeria's capital territory. Philip, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. This is not the first time we will be hearing about the call for climate justice. In fact, year after year, we hear pledges with regards to this matter, conversations being heard. But not much is seen to be done. Are we really ready to address this matter head on? Well, I think uh, the protest by the women in um, Senegal actually represents uh, the picture of um, the climate justice uh, spectrum across the continent because uh, the women complained about uh, floods, they complained about no action on the ground to address the climate crisis. And what is happening there is also what is happening in Nigeria and other parts of the world, especially in the global south, where these climate talks have become a mere jamboree. Year in, year out, we're having these discussions. Our delegations, you know, go to these uh, countries where these uh, discussions are going to be held, and they come back with nothing. About 60,000 delegates are going to Azerbaijan. Uh, for the talks as it is today. But there's a, a good news by the side. We had a country like um, uh, Papua New Guinea pulled out of the discussions because they felt that there has been no matching action uh, in terms of uh, climate justice like the women in Senegal are demanding. So it's um, at the reality, the, what the women are doing and their protest march actually represents what most civil society uh, communities on the front lines feel about the discussions uh, that we've been having every year. But uh, even these countries that are seeking climate justice, do they have the climate infrastructure um, for whatever is necessary to ensure we achieve climate justice? Talk about climate financing, talk about every other thing necessary. Are, are we ready, even when the funds and everything that is necessary is given, do we have the structure in place? Well, the, the point here is that we don't even have the funds in the first place. Uh, one of the major highlights of uh, the COP29, which is starting on the 11th, is that a new climate finance goal will be set. Uh, the existing goal, which was put in place in 2009, was that the rich industrialized nations that are responsible for this uh, climate crisis uh, put together a hundred billion dollars every year since 2009 to address the climate crisis. Unfortunately, um, we've never met that goal. So, uh, in terms of even the infrastructure being there, um, we want the infrastructure to be the finance to be there in the first place to be able to put that kind of infrastructure in place. But unfortunately, like I said earlier on. The, the treaty talks have become a talk shop only. So, um, countries send delegations there and come back with quickly, nothing. Quickly, quickly, Philip. So, what, from your perspective, will be uh, actionable recommendations now to addressing this matter? Well, um, the discussions are set already. Um, some of the issues that are to be discussed uh, at the COP. Uh, includes the new climate finance goals. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, what we had since 2009 did not work. Deliberately, the rich nations did not make it to work. Uh, the loss and damage uh, finance, which was operationalized last year, there are still some uh, issues uh, that are going to be hammered together, especially in relation to scaling up the, uh, the funding. And 
how that is going to work within the general framework of climate finance. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, I think the talks this year, uh, there's, there's a lot of lackluster approach uh, because, uh -huh. one, it's even holding in a country that is, you know, a rentier state, which is heavily dependent on fossil fuels. So okay. that alone is even a knockout. Okay. Uh, that same country is a country that... Um, okay. All right. Unfortunately, our time is up. As you know, time is not our friend. But Philip Jackpo, we must thank you for your time on uh, the world now. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. And that's all on the world now. For more updates uh, on the stories we are monitoring, you can visit our website, www.tvcnews.tv. You can also follow us on our social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, and on X at TVC News NG. On YouTube, we are live at TVC News Nigeria. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again.